Hello, Gemini. How's everybody doing today? I hope you're doing well. I see we have some birthdays uh, for the folks that are watching live today. So uh, happy birthday to anybody who has a birthday this month. Um, thank you so much for joining me. And we've got some great stuff coming through today. Uh, part of the reason it took me a while to get here again is because it feels like my <laughs> intuitive channel keeps getting more open each month. And I was feverishly writing some stuff, but we'll talk about it. All good symbols. Um, a lot of it this, this month for you is about growth, um, finishing up things, transforming, and um, I think it's pretty exciting, actually. Uh, I don't know how all of you are dealing with the retrograde that we're in right now, for those of you that are live, but it definitely has been interesting. Um, today, hopefully, everything works out. I upgraded all of my equipment because there were some issues uh, a few days back with the live stream. So I got a new modem, a new router, and... Um, uh, better service. Hey, buddy, what you doing? <laughs> uh, so all, all of that should get us in a good place today. Uh, no expenses spared for this this uh, experience here. So thank you for being patient. Anyone that was a part of the Taurus reading um, should be okay today. I doubled my speed. It's the highest package available. And again, I upgraded all the software and hardware. Um, so retrograde sometimes helps us do things that we need to do, cleaning up. And I get questions a lot about like what to do during it. So if you're watching this in the month of June, even though I'm streaming it for July readings, that's a good thing to do. Sometimes we can't avoid it. So if you're having issues with your car, if you're having issues with um, internet connection or something going on in your health, you shouldn't avoid fixing it in a retrograde, you should fix it. What it means is there, there'll be complications, like I had to do two trips, they're sending another piece of equipment out today, so there's more wrinkles to it, but I couldn't avoid it. So don't be afraid to do something necessary, I like to kind of interject that sometimes. It doesn't mean that we just hibernate and retrograde and wait for it to be over. Sometimes you have to push through some something like start a new job, start a move, whatever. It, you just work with it and plan for those unexpected wrinkles, okay? So hopefully everyone reads me loud and clear today. If anything happens, let me know. But again, I have like a gigabit Ethernet now, so it should be pretty good. Um, upstream is pretty fast too. So and it's a very special thank you to all my channel members and anyone that gives back because that's where I, I put it back into production value like that. So um, it helps a lot. So for anyone that's given super stickers like Christina or anyone that's a channel member, uh, I appreciate you guys for doing that. Thank you very much. Let's talk a little bit about how today is going to be organized. And since I talked about super stickers, I'll hit upon that right now. If you'd like to show some support for what you see here, you can do that by um, clicking on this little dollar sign. There'll be a pop up or a drop down where you have a chance to send a sticker, or you can even join the channel from there as well if you want to. Uh, uh, completely optional, by the way, but it does help what I'm doing here. And on replay, a different option is available between share and the like and dislike buttons, and that's called applaud. And that's only available on desktop or Android. Um, and you can also go to my website and there are other ways to support me. It's all optional, but appreciated. Um, let's go ahead, actually one last thing. If you ever wanna follow me on social media, my handle is at Nicholas Ashbaugh on most. Uh, it's an Ashbaugh on Twitter. So it's a great way to keep in touch. All right, let's get into the reading today. Just a quick note that I do not answer questions during this, it's a general, but we're gonna have a lot of different parts to it. We start with the channeled messages. This is everything that I get when I uh, basically show up in the morning and meditate. I also take things from the dreams and interpret that. Then we'll move into the, the Celtic cross where we'll look a little bit deeper at what's possible and also maybe uh, things that could be standing in the way of you and what you're trying to manifest. I expand the forecast after that to look at health, wealth, love, and destiny. And then we go a little deeper afterwards. We'll do many reviews so you can redigest all of that. And then we look at two or three things where you really have a chance to spread your wings and grow. Um, and that's the soul path. Uh, then we have a brief meditation and then I will work with a final question, basically a silent one that you will send to me, okay? So there's a lot here, it's varied, it's a lot of fun. If you uh, ever have to kind of step away, it's available immediately after on replay and I put chapters in so you can rewatch the pieces that you want. So if you're impatient and just want the recap, you can always do that as well. All right, let's get into it today. I'd like to start with the spirit totem. Um, and the spirit totem uh, today was something that I saw on a walk and I couldn't get out of my head, uh, which is the ladybug. But the thing that I saw, I'm gonna show you a picture of it. Uh, many of us, and even I forgot, except I, have you ever gone down the Wikipedia sort of rabbit hole where you just start looking things up? I think one day for the, for the totem of, of ladybug, I looked this up, but I didn't incorporate it. Today, the ladybug, we're gonna be focusing on transformation. 
And I'm gonna show you a little video that I took on uh, one of my walks here with Apollo. And if you look real close, you'll see this little guy in the center moving. It looks like it could be just any random insect, but it's actually a ladybug larva, which is really cool. And I didn't remember that until I looked at it later. I was gonna post it on my Instagram story. You know, sometimes I'll take walks with my dog and I post flowers and pictures of what we're looking at. And I was like, oh yeah, that's, that's a ladybug actually. And uh, I wanted to talk about that today for you about the different phases. And we forget that ladybugs are just like butterflies and moths. They go through a uh, pupa stage where uh, they go into a sort of metamorphosis. So we're gonna focus on the metamorphosis energy for your sign today. Um, so let me talk a little bit, let's look at some pictures of them real quick because I'm a visual learner and it helps. So there are four different stages of growth. Um, so you'll see here first we have the sort of eggs here, kind of look like fish eggs actually. And they usually put them on the bottom of a leaf. Um, let's see if I can do this upside down. So they usually put that on the bottom of a leaf. Let's look at the next phase, um, which is the larva phase, which is something that I just showed you. It kind of has the ladybug colors on it, which is interesting. It looks a little scary, but it's not. This is a really beneficial insect because if you've ever had uh, flowers that are prone, like roses, to getting aphids, you can go to a local garden store and buy uh, usually, I think they're lacewigs and uh, ladybugs, and you can put those on the plant and it's a natural way for them to get rid of them. So basically you can help create more ladybugs. They'll, all the larva will feed on it. And in a day or two, um, most of the aphids will be gone. So you don't have to put any of the poison on it. So that's what farmers will use this and gardeners will use this larva and also uh, adult ladybugs because they're gonna lay the eggs there. And it's a great way to get rid of aphids. Um, after the, that phase, they go into the pupa or the metamorphosis, which looks a lot like a butterfly, like what you would see with a monarch butterfly, which is really cool. And you start to see now the colors that you would expect on the ladybug. Then it emerges. You should look, there's some cool videos on YouTube. I'm just showing you some freeze frames here. Um, and then finally, when we're all said and done here, it will emerge and um, it actually has wings. We don't always see them, but uh, if you look at the wings on one of the videos, they're actually like folded a couple of times and there's some cool videos on how they um, have to kind of like unfold them and stretch them out. So what a beautiful, insect and again we don't always think about the metamorphosis and the sort of flying phase of the uh, ladybug so although i've used it before in a totem i've never really talked about its its different phases and also its ability to really like spread its wing and flies and fly rather so it's really really cool all right so uh that's that let's let's get into the messages that i wrote down i just i like to geek out <laughs> and understand the totem that comes to me. And so I learn a lot about nature and, um, and it also kind of gives us insight into what, what's going on energetically. All right, so your spirit totem is a ladybug, but specifically we're looking at the four stages of its life. That's the main thing here. As I said earlier, they are beneficial insects. They're renowned or appreciated for their ability to clear out pests, particularly aphids. And um, they can eat up to 5,000 insects in an adult life, which is amazing. Again, we should be looking at stuff like this rather than spraying and putting powders and stuff like that because it's a nice way to work with the ecosystem. So, you know, obviously you want to work with insects that are indigenous and, and local to your environment, but I'm sure there are things just like that. Um, you know, the other thing is like a praying mantis. It, it's an, another beneficial insect. We, we should have all of these in our gardens and not be afraid. Certain types of spiders are good. So there's all kinds of ways to manage pests. This is one of them. The red color, if you ever wondered in the little spots, it's actually to warn a predator, like I don't taste good. Um, and one of the things for us, I think it's showing is to kind of like develop a thicker skin and to use your body language to kind of push off people that are trying to cause trouble or trying to kind of uh, push your buttons, you can just give them a stern look saying, not today, <laughs> not now. And um, there's a lot that you can do with nonverbal warnings. And that's what I was getting from that. There's some really cool time markers on this particular totem. So um, this can help you in different stages. And we're gonna go through the stages here uh, for the next piece. So if you're trying to incubate something, um, right now you might have a three to five day sort of incubation period for that because the eggs for this insect usually hatch in just about a work week basically. So give yourself one week to get something started. And then after that, it's like enough thinking, enough research, it's time to take some action. The larva stage uh, is about one month. 
So once you start to kind of like kick off a new part of your life, whether it's deciding to change, um, uh, you know, change up your health routine or your diet or kick off a project or you're just trying to change something, give it about a month and you want to really develop during that period of time. Um, because all that the larva does is eat and eat and eat. It's a co consuming sort of portion. So um, this is research, this is development, this is picking up the phone, this is doing the work, but you're feeding the project too. You could see the project is a, uh, like the larva basically. Um, and then the pupa stage, which is that metamorphosis, it's like the cocoon. It's called different things for different insects. Um, I believe moths have a cocoon. Um, the butterflies have a sort of uh, chrysalis and this insect has a pupa, but it's all the same thing, it's metamorphosis. That takes about 15 days. So change doesn't happen overnight, does it? Sometimes we think like, I've done everything, I've sent it in, I've done this, why isn't it happening? Because there's some development that needs to happen. And if you are doing something like a declaration, like I quit, I love you, or you're coming out or something like that since it's Pride Month, um, then this would be also giving people and giving yourself a chance to sit with the new you, right? And just because you got like a diploma, for instance, doesn't mean that suddenly you're different. You have to accept that I'm no longer a student. Now I'm, now I'm gonna look for school, like for a job rather, and uh, everything changes. Uh, so 15 days, give yourself half a month. And then the adult phase is one year. So you're on a one year trajectory for change. I really liked that we have time markers for the different parts of the phases of this. So depending on where you're at in a stage of your life, for a project, for a change within yourself, you can look at these three to five, uh, one month, 15 days, et cetera, and kind of apply it to that as well. All right, so for many of you, you may just be at this genesis stage, the egg stage. It's a time to begin something new. And because some of you are uh, kind of on your solar return, birthday period, this is a really good time to reevaluate. Where am I at? What do I wanna do? What am I happy with, et cetera? Uh, you don't need to do that on New Year's. It's actually very valuable to do it on your, uh, on your birthday. You should be finding a way to challenge, engage, or expand your mind, body, and spirit, right? And uh, it should just feel good. It should feel like this is something that makes me get excited. Feeling the butterflies, the positive butterflies. Areas where you might have had a block before could open up right now. We're, uh, we're in a very transformational energy right now. So um, even the retrograde itself gives you a, you can see it as a second chance. So I look at like the Eight of Cups card as not only a return card, but a chance to wrap things up or a second chance. And that's ultimately what retrograde is. If you didn't learn something, you can learn it now. If you didn't um, effectively create some sort of a clean break, you can do that now. And we talked about the clean break when we were um, doing the Taurus reading. So that applies to you as well. All of this leads you into the larva or growth sort of energy, which is things will happen if and only if you nurture and feed them. Um, set some priorities and keep them. You and only you can make those priorities and make them happen. So there may be temptations, there may be opportunities where people sometimes are kind of coming in and making you second guess yourself. Can I do this? Will I do this? Should I do this? So you have to be the one that's strong and sets those priorities and keeps them. Reevaluate anyone or anything that kind of sets itself up as a block in your life. Um, if it's inhibiting your ability to grow, it's probably not the right thing at this moment in time. All of this is bringing you now for the big into this sort of big change energy, the metamorphosis. Um, I think the most important thing to this is, of course, we know change doesn't happen immediately. We talked about that earlier, but you shouldn't make a key change until you're ready. And this is important for those of you coming out, and I use the coming out in a sort of general sense. Um, any sort of announcement, again, it, it can be a declaration of quitting, uh, a declaration of love. It can be of who you love, of who you are, any sort of quote unquote coming out or announcement. If you don't feel it, no one's gonna buy it. No one's gonna believe it. And if you have hesitation when you say, even if you just say I love you to someone, then it's more of a question, <laughs> not good. It needs to really be like, I love you and I'm ready for the next step or something like that. So if you're, if you, when you say something, there's a sense of hesitation, questioning or fear, you're not there yet. So work on that internal growth so that it becomes excitement and, and calm even. You could say, I love you, so I wanna share this with you because this is really important. And um, the people that I love, I want them to know X, Y, Z. So that's, that's how I would set up an announcement is, 
Um, I've been working on something exciting. I really want to share it with you. Um, it makes me excited. And I hope you can share in that excitement with me. You're not asking for permission. You're not even asking for acceptance. You're saying, I care about you. I'm comfortable with this and I want to tell you this. So a really powerful way to say anything um, that is going to create a change afterwards. So again, quitting, declaring love or announcing something. You have to feel it. You have to have that sort of growth within. If you ever look at a video of like a butterfly or uh, this today, like the ladybug, um, when they go into that sort of metamorphosis stage, what's really cool is they come out of the larva and they go into that. So basically the changes happen and they shed their skin and then they kind of hang on the you know leaf or the twig or whatever. Um, but they've already changed within. Shedding the skin is almost like an afterthought. It's like, yeah, I've changed. So let's just take this off because it doesn't represent me anymore. So that's where you should be when you get to the declaration um, moment in your life. Whatever it is, uh, change can be scary, exciting, and exhilarating. It's a roller coaster, just like a roller coaster. You may not like all parts of it, but it can be a lot of fun if you can kind of just go with the flow of the energy. And as we saw with that beautiful picture of the uh, ladybug spreading its wings, um, it's time to fly. But the hardest part sometimes is saying what you need to say or taking that step. Just like a little baby bird, um, the mom has to sometimes give it a nudge. So maybe you have to give yourself that little nudge when you're finally at the point, it's like, I've done all the research, I've done all the thinking, I've done all the waiting. It's either now or never. So um, so that's kind of just a little reminder that you're never really ready for the change. Sometimes you just have to kind of take that step forward. Remember how hard you've worked for whatever it is that you're building in your life and um, trust the process and, and trust that the universe is supporting you. Um, so when, when that happens, it really is time to spread your wings, okay? They are hidden from view, the ladybug wings. And yeah, you, you really should do sort of look at a video. There are some things where I was surprised. They, they, uh, they fold it up a couple times, kind of like a napkin, and then it goes underneath that hard shell. Um, so you may not know your own capacity, your own potential. And the same is true of others. They may not know your own potential, their own potential. And so what you have to do is just prove it and show it and um, give yourself and them as well a chance to see the new you. Because once you've, you've said, I want to do this, let's say it's like a career change. Uh, people will think you're a little crazy or may doubt you until you start to successfully go upon that path. Anyone that's an artist knows that because people will think, you don't know what you're doing or I don't know what you're doing. And if I don't know what you're doing, I'm worried about you. A lot of times this is parents, bosses, peers, people in your life that are just sort of like meaning for the best, but sometimes they kind of get in the way because they, uh, they just want something guaranteed. Change isn't always guaranteed. Not everything in life is black and white. The next piece here is um, I was thinking very much of the consumption phase, the, uh, the larva phase. I want you to focus on detoxification. It could be in diet, environment, or relationships. You want to be mindful of what you're consuming energetically because that can inhibit or it can propel your growth. So if you have a lot of negativity around you, of course, that's going to stunt growth. If you have a lot of support, um, then it's going to be the reverse. If you have a lot of pressure, pressure can also inhibit growth. So if you grew up and you had a, a mom or dad that would punish you for getting an A minus or a B plus, for instance, you're going to be way too hard on yourself. So you're going to have to find that fine line between, um, you know, pushing yourself and feeling sort of pressured into something. So um, detoxification and kindness to your own process, I think, is really, really important. Okay. The next image I was shown was a closed clam. Um, and there was, it was almost like I was being given some sort of recipe, which we'll talk about later. I don't, I don't eat shellfish, but um, I'm just interpreting messages. Uh, when I was looking at the clam, I kind of went into the energy of that and tried to understand how that would relate to you. Uh, it felt as if you were holding on to something or kind of like keeping something tight. You were holding, it's very much like the uh, four of pentacles or the hermit energy. Withholding and then holding on to is what I felt with the clam. Uh, and maybe someone else could have been shutting you out. This could also be like the six of swords or four of swords where someone's kind of like pulling back, they're distant. Um, friendships, lovers, coworkers, everyone really needs to be reciprocating energy and, and it should be open. We want the clamshell open, not closed. Um, be mindful of how closing your emotions in can actually affect your body. So um, some of you may have TMJ where you clench your jaw. Some of you could end up having tight shoulders. There could also be sort of like digestive issues because 
your, your stomach is kind of holding on to things. Just look at how your body is processing stress. And if you're having trouble with that processing, then obviously work with a professional to make sure that you're set up for success with that, right? All right, so let's move on to the next piece. I, I was walking in a rainstorm in one of my dreams, but it wasn't this feeling of, oh, I need to get inside. I was actually enjoying it, kind of like a summer rain, you know? And I was looking at all the green plants around me, all the growth um, as they were pushing through the soil. And the way that I was interpreting this is that for some of you, this, this could be like an emotional release, but it feels good. Sometimes when you have a good cry or you laugh way too much, it just feels like this good sort of exhaustion. And that's what I was feeling. Um, so the emotions may run high, but I think they're also going to help you get into um, the mindset of abundance. And for many of you, I really feel like there's this new creative flow that's happening for you. Emotions are good. Ace of Cups, Queen of Cups, the sort of energy of, of, of expansion is coming through for you. And um, if you surrender to that, some really cool stuff could happen, especially if you're creative or open to change. Um, move where your heart, where your intuition and where the energy uh, is pushing you or moving you. Think of this as a synchronicity. It feels like you want to be, or the universe wants you to be led into this new opportunity. So if you try to go against the stream or the, against the flow of energy, it's going to take longer. You're still probably going to get there because you can't fight the flow. Um, but if you can go with it, it could happen faster. And it's really just about peace and comfort with uh, respect to ambiguity, right? So knowing that we can't always control or see the outcome, but trusting that it's going to be okay because we've done what we needed to do. The, yeah, the second, yeah, second to last vision that I got was the uh, mountaintop. I always associate this with the 10 of wands because you normally will see in a Rider Waite Smith card, the person carrying a bunch of logs or sticks up a hill. And I, I saw you at the top of this mountain with none of the burden on your back. So to me, it shows me that you're able and about to, let's say that we're at, we're at the precipice of overcoming a key challenge in your life, okay? And with this comes a new perspective. Uh, and it could mean that something that you've been doing for a while, you no longer wanna do. So it's time to move up, it's time to move on, it's time to move out. Sometimes this is really frustrating because let's say, you know, you've been working on a career path since you graduated high school or something and you've, you've gotten exactly where you wanted to be and it's, it's really kind of like cushy and exactly what you wanted, but it's no longer satisfying. So people around you would wonder why are you taking a, a right or left turn? It's just because you've done everything. You've gone through that metamorphosis and it's, it's, it's like you've got to change your skin. You've got to come out. Um, so there's like two coming outs. One, when they shed their skin from being a larva to uh, the pupa, uh, and then one when they're coming out of pupa and becoming the adult phase. So there's a couple changes that you might be going through, a change of mind, a change of heart, and it's just about when to reveal the change to others because it's already happened for some of you. So give yourself permission. It happens in relationships. It happens in jobs. It happens in living environments. Sometimes you just look around and think, I've seen these four walls way too much. I'm ready for a change. So change is what it's really about for you over the next six to eight weeks, uh, Gemini. Last piece, and then we're going to get into looking at the Celtic cross. Um, a guide was dictating a recipe to me for cooking, and they were going very fast. And I asked them a couple times to repeat it. And then finally, I just thought it doesn't matter. If you ever watch any of the cooking shows, I, I geek out sometimes if I just need like a half hour or something, like whether it's Chopped or MasterChef or Bon Appetit on YouTube or whatever. Sometimes I just like to watch people cook for some reason. It's therapeutic. Um, what's cool with a really good chef is that they don't pay attention to the recipe so much like they know it. And then they improvise. Oh, let's add a little bit more of this. Or yeah, it's been about three minutes. You kind of intuitively know. And the only way that new recipes are developed is people take a chance. They're like, I know that this and this will work together. We need to have like an acid for this. And we need a little bit of sugar here and all of this. So be the chemist, be the magician. When I think of this, I think of the magician in my head. So everyone's recipe for success is different. You're gonna have to improvise. You're gonna have to try something. And even if you, <clears throat> for those of you that might have like old index cards from your grandma or something, and you're trying to repeat her favorite recipe, it probably won't work or taste exactly like hers because she was adding a little bit of this, doing a little bit of that, keeping it a couple minutes extra here, doing something we didn't know about. So improvise. You're probably gonna come up with a better recipe than what was there, all right? Not everything is gonna be spelled out. That's why in this lifetime, we're given free will. So imp improvisation is gonna be key. 
the same way that I write a bunch of cards, but I don't read them verbatim when I'm doing this because new things come to me. So let's have a script, but know when to break from the script, right? Okay, so let me stack up all of these cards. If you missed anything, don't worry. We're gonna repeat it at the center point. I go through it really fast. If for the, any of you that think that this is a long reading, uh, you can always come back and look at the recap. It's usually seven minutes and you'll, I'll cover everything in that amount of time. So that's meant as your sort of uh, pulse if you ever need to come back and revisit this. So we'll do that. Plus a lot of you will join me mid uh, reading. So I wanna make sure that you can catch up. <clears throat> So uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome everyone. It's good to see a nice full room. Welcome to my moderators as well, Maria and Dakota. They're here to answer high level questions. So treat them with some love and kindness as I get everything set up here. Um, today, I'm gonna be using one of the new decks that I got with the help of you, um, all of your kindness. Uh, it was actually one that you suggested to me. It's called True Heart Intuitive Terra. Um, I like it because it's kind of diverse. It's a new uh, deck to read with and um, uh, I hope you enjoy it. So let me just check all my settings here and then I'm going to get into the Celtic cross. All right, let's get going here. Again, if I forgot to say this earlier, you can use my reading for your sun, rising and moon sign. You can also watch it for Venus. You can watch on behalf of people that you love. And if you ever need a reading and you just don't care about the sign show up anyway because I read intuitively. So you can come to any of my readings and get a message. That's the uh, that's the secret. <laughs> I've, I'm of course reading it for Gemini, but anyone that's present or watches it on replay may still receive messages that are valid and helpful to them. I got this recommendation on Twitter from somebody. So thank you. I like the deck. It's cool. Okay, we've got two here. I'm just going to leave them because they clarify each other. I'm also using Lord Ganesha here for the catalyst this month because I feel like we could all use some help, whether you're watching this in retrograde or post retrograde. Um, working through blocks is gonna be still something that we need to be focusing on for the next six to eight weeks. Isn't it amazing how different things are this year? Like what a difference a year makes. That's what I was thinking yesterday as I was walking. So as you kind of go on to the next year of your life, many of you that are having birthdays, think optimistically, like I can't wait to see how things change for the better open up. If you haven't already hit the subscribe button or the like button, consider doing that. It helps with discovery of this channel. Subscribe is the same as follow. It doesn't mean that you're gonna to need to do anything and it helps me a lot. So thank you to everyone that's done that. All right, let me just get these a little closer to the camera so you can see them and let's get talking here. Okay, take a drink of water and then we're gonna go into everything. So the first card is reversed. This is your catalyst. And we have Lord Ganesha here. Uh, and the message here is concentration. So for many of you, Gemini, it's going to be hard to maybe commit to one thing and to kind of like see it through to fruition. Uh, this is the prioritization message that I brought through earlier. So set a priority, set something in motion that you care about. And every day, come back just a little bit to that and make sure that you're you're keeping on track and you may need an accountability partner here, which we see in the form of uh, this little rat or mouse here. Uh, so have somebody that is that little voice of conscience. It reminds me of Jiminy Cricket or whatever. So uh, whether that's something that you can hold yourself to, or you might need someone else in your life to just sort of say, hey, how are you doing on this? How are you feeling about this? The fact that the concentration card was reversed is just a reminder that for some of you, it may be tricky. It may be a little bit difficult to, um, to figure out how to stay focused. 
And the number nine is associated with this. So as we're looking at um, this month and next month, since some of you are reading this uh, or looking at this in June, uh, take a look at the ninth and then look at it from the ninth to the ninth. I feel like that's the key period when you're gonna have some of those issues with concentration. Um, if you do set your mind to it, however, good things will happen. If you're having writer's block or having any sort of creative issues, uh, remember what I was talking about yesterday in Taurus, which is there comes a, a, a stage in work where it's just exhaustion. I was recounting my time back in college where sometimes we would stay up late. I would study with a friend or something, but anything after like one or 2 AM was very counterproductive. It was just making me tired and I wasn't going to remember it. So as an adult, what I've done is I've just gone to bed earlier and gotten up earlier um, because the sleep is the most powerful thing. It, it, a refreshed mind can absorb more than a fatigued mind. And a fatigued mind when you're working is not as careful or productive. Um, so any boss, partner, or friend that pushes you to operate in a fatigued state is either, <laughs> I, I can think of a lot of things, but I would say they're either irrational, um, they're not realistic, uh, or they're just projecting their own fears. And what you would say is, I know you're nervous, but you have to trust me and I have to work with what, what I can do in my body and I'm this isn't healthy. So let me get some rest. I'll come in extra early tomorrow. We're gonna get this done and you're gonna stop stressing out because the stress doesn't help. And that's how I would handle that. And if they can't handle that, then it's a bigger warning. You may have to kind of like acquiesce and work with them on this issue, but then in the future, you don't wanna keep doing that because it's it's not sustainable, right? All right, so Gemini, your center card today is the Two of Swords. And the Two of Swords is really, it's decision time. And sometimes with the Two of Swords, there's no right or wrong. The only thing that can kind of um, hold you back is indecision, fear, or overanalyzing things, which as an air sign is completely possible. And from one air sign to another, I'm a Libra, so I get it. Um, sometimes you just have this sort of, we can keep going and going and going. So with this, it's saying you have to take what's in front of you and make the best possible decision. And then you make another one after that. And then another one after that. And they get progressively easier because you start to trust yourself. So you already know, here's the, here's the secret. When I look in the environment, we have judgment reversed. This tells me that you know what to do, but for some reason you're having a hard time accepting it. So I'm gonna try to walk through the card spread and we'll get you to the acceptance so that you can get past it. Here's the good news. This is being crossed by the sun, which is a very, very beneficial card, a very, very um, positive energy. The sun is reminding you to go with your gut because it's the solar plexus. It's also reminding you that your charisma, your charm um, is enough to also turn things around. So sometimes if you are put in a situation where you have to deliver difficult conversation, bad news, your ability to just be a really good communicator and to care and to connect on the heart space is going to be enough sometimes to carry people through the fact that, yeah, this isn't ideal, but I like you and we'll figure this out. Have, um, have some levity to this, have some fun. This is a baby, usually. You would normally see a little child walking on a horse or a unicorn or something. Um, so you wanna find that youthful part of your, your sort of being, a little bit of lightness, and um, that's gonna help someone out as well. So. Don't, don't sweat the small stuff, trust your intuition and trust your innate sort of ability to be charming and um, fun. And that's gonna help you with that, okay? There might be some folks in your life where you're finally seeing something you didn't wanna see. So there's a different sort of perspective on this. Um, and so with the two of swords and even like the eight of swords, sometimes we are faced with an inevitable sort of Fact. And this is saying it's time to make peace with that. And we've got like so many symbols of like intuition here. Even the sun has like an eye on this. So I would say, you know it, you see it. Um, and you just have to kind of like accept what's right in front of you or what you're feeling or what you're seeing here. So this could mean like there's someone in your life who disappointed you. There's something that's really exciting and you know you need to do it, but you're just afraid. Fear is the main thing that's holding you back. Fear of what people will think, what will happen if you do this. We don't have time for that anymore, right? Looking at the deep past, which for many of you that are joining me in June instead of July, uh, is something that you're finishing up right now. We have the Princess of Wands. She's reversed, but let's look at her upright. Um, I like that she has some of the energy that we would normally see 
with the Queen of Wands. Um, so a princess is a page. And so basically what we're seeing here is just the beginning, just the that genesis. To me, this would be either the eggs or the, uh, what was the next one, the larva. I feel like you're just starting to get out there and see something develop. So don't overthink it. Um, I like the wands suit because I feel like it's very magical, especially the feminine cards in this. So in this case, the princess or the queen, because they are able to take something that's limited, kind of rub their hands together and create something magical. Um, yeah, we see even this, this, I'm not sure if this is the desert, but normally you would see the queen in a desert. The page here, I can't quite tell where she is, but um, it's the fire of create, like, yeah, the sort of creative fire that kind of will cr make something new happen. Normally with the queen, you would see a sunflower, which we kind of have here, the potential to go all the way. Um, and the sunflower is usually growing in a desert. So you can create growth in a desert of resources when other people can't imagine why or how you could do it. Innovation and improvisation is really key. So you've got a good idea. You've got a good sort of gut feeling of what you need to be doing in your life. Don't overthink it. That's a common thread here that's going on. Keep an open mind whenever wands is reversed. It's like having blinders on or you know cotton in your ears. You need to take that off, take these off, particularly seeing something you don't wanna see and just try it, listen to it, go with where it leads you. But yeah, um, the queen and the princess are very magical when it comes to wands. So I feel like you can make it work um, <laughs> to quote what that guy from Project Runway, right? Okay, 10 of swords, really interesting. This is in the recent past. So it's a lesson that most of you have integrated, but some of you, if you're watching it live in retrograde are either coping with the sort of like a little little echo of, of uh, sort of hesitation from the past. Some of you, there might be a new lesson that's reminding you of this. So 10 of swords is a full stop. It's a period. It's the end of something. Um, usually you will see a new day. Here we see like the moon, um, but whatever. Normally you will see a new day or a sense of light or enlightenment that comes through the disappointment. That's what I would hold on to. Okay, something upset me. Okay, someone said something painful. Okay. I can't do this anymore, but now I can refocus my energy into something that's more deserving because that caused me pain, because that was not what I was supposed to do. And the universe wanted me to have, without a shadow of a doubt, a clear vision of what I needed to do next. So it's not the pain, it's the clarity that's the blessing in the Ten of Swords. It's not fun. We don't love Ten of Swords, but it is a, it's one of the best teacher cards in tarot. The Devil's a pretty good teacher, the Ten of Swords and the Tower, all of them, when they come through, we know we don't want to do it anymore. So whatever comes through for you as I'm done with that, I don't want to do it anymore, amen to that. And the lesson has been incorporated. As a health card, we really want to pay attention to the back. I mentioned the clamshell being closed and that kind of tension that I was picking up on. So it could be hitting anywhere in your back, actually. Um, even the jaw kind of extends to the back of the neck and, and all of that. So uh, definitely... Do what you can this month to loosen up the energy. Uh, maybe it is Pilates or yoga. It could just be gentle stretching. Um, standard disclaimers apply. If you're having any pain or discomfort in your body, you should go to the doctor. But I think general moving and stretching can benefit all of us, body permitting. Um, so pay attention to chronic fatigue and pain as well. All of this stuff, just hit pause on this reading and go to the doctor and <laughs> you can finish it later. That stuff is important. Take care of it, okay? Uh, but for the rest of you, it's just letting go of something that was painful and kind of like thinking, what do I want to do next? I really love this uh, hanged man, if I can get it off the table here, um, because it indicates what the hanged man is all about, which is enlightenment. Um, and if you ever look at it upright, I'm always kind of, it's not quite Trikonasa because you normally put the the uh, foot against the inner thigh or whatever, but it's very close to tree pose. So it's interesting that that, that is taken from, like the card actually has like a tree can also pose on it. Uh, so what we see here with the beautiful nimbus or halo around his head is that you're learning something in this period. This would be the transformation that's happening within. This is like the cocoon, the chrysalis or the pupa stage, which is I know what I need to do. I'm doing it. You're ruminating on stuff, but you've already changed, but you're accepting it. So some of you are still in that headspace. The sooner you accept, the easier, the quicker, the more fun things start to get. So 
yeah, I'm encouraging you to accept what you need to do. We got two cards and I let them stick together here in the near future. This is where you're headed. It's not necessarily the outcome, but this is what's blocking or helping you. So um, the card underneath, let's start with that. I really like this interpretation of Nine of Swords because I like to remind people it's in your head sometimes. So we can see that this is overthinking. This is keeping yourself up at night wondering, you know, is this gonna happen? What am I gonna do tomorrow? What if this happens? Oh my God. And it can kind of just be all that stressing. Uh, it can also be just a little echo, like I said, of something from before. Words can kind of sit in there and echo in your head. If you're feeling this, it would be good to talk to someone, whether it's a friend or a professional. Um, a lot of this is fear. And just saying it sometimes when you say it, you, you know that it's, it's not really gonna happen that way. Uh, this can also indicate problems with sleeping. These two go hand in hand. If you're having pain or chronic issues, then it may be impeding on your sleep. But the sleep can also be due to stress in your life. Always look at things like pillows, mattress, and, um, and just sort of like your general, the chair that you're sitting on, stuff like that. How are you supporting your spine? And uh, that's gonna help out a lot as well. All right, this card is basically being modified by the Four of Cups, which is change your perspective. I really like this too, because you can see someone peeking in. It's a, a more cosmic view, there's something else. It's almost like the creator is popping through and saying, hey, how about this? How about what I'm trying to show you? You're, you're missing the point here. So I always see Four of Cups, it's my personal interpretation that it's a hidden blessing. It's a missed perspective. Um, and that if you change it, if we notice here, this person's picking it up and we see a rose, really nice little image there. Uh, roses are a great image too of something that is not what it seems because until it blooms, it just looks like this thorny plant that's kind of not very interesting, right? They're not very attractive plants, roses. But then once the blooms happen, oh my God, they're amazing. And if I have time later, I'll show you some roses. Um, I had them on my Instagram story and I was looking at them last night. They're beautiful and um, definitely have that sort of, also it's a reminder that nothing's perfect, roses and thorns. So all of us are dealing with our thorns, but there's something beautiful that can come out of that. So if you can take the painful experience and figure like, how am I going to bloom? How, what's my sunflower gonna look like? That's all that matters, right? Okay, let's look at your ego card this month. We have the Ace of Swords. Are you ready to take action? Because that's what this is telling you to do. You and only you can be the one that is moving something forward. Also, you might be receiving an option to do something. So this could be a letter, a call, or a correspondence of some sort where someone says, hey, I was thinking about you. Are you interested in this? Hey, do you wanna go out on a date? Hey, have you thought about this, this, or this? But the question is you have to sort of like figure, do I wanna do this? And um, we see this person taking the sword. So I feel like this is a good time to take some action. If you are creative, this is really good for artistic expression, whether it's writing, singing, you know, painting, sculpting, dancing. I can't list everything, but there's action and movement associated with this. In your general life, it's just saying, I know what I need to do and now I'm gonna do it. Your, your voice is very powerful this month. It always is because you're air, um, but really use it to your advantage this month. People are going to, they wanna buy what you're selling basically, right? So now this is ultimately, this is the phoenix rising from the ashes here, judgment. Um, we have judgment reversed, which is basically, do I believe myself? If you don't believe in you, who will? Um, if you don't love yourself, who will? Uh, this is about accepting and acceptance uh, because we have all those hands raising up there. And it really is just a matter of you speaking your truth. You are very much Gabriel and very much the sun here. Um, and people will connect with that as soon as you declare, as soon as you believe. You are also the people rising from the past, rising from the dead or rising from some sort of um, tricky situation. So this is, this is a really positive card, but the reversal of this tells me that you know what you need to do, but you're having a hard time accepting it. And I think for some of you, there could be stress, unnecessary stress or pressure. And there's a different way to look at this. Look at it from a different perspective. Talk to someone. I feel like someone else can see it more clearly than you. And it does feel like um, it's really time to move on here. I, I wanna look at this card one more time. Um, as I'm looking at the, uh, <laughs> we, we sort of see different zodiac signs here interspersed in the tree, which is interesting. But you've gained all the insight that you need. 
Uh, so I feel like the sooner you can make peace with that, the better. We have the Hierophant card here, which is actually a really good construction card. I don't always look at it as that, but the Hierophant is someone that people listens to, illustrated here very traditionally as the Pope. But to me, I see it, if you look at the bottom, the most important thing is you hold the key to what's going on. You're also the one that can um, set in motion something. And if you, if you say it, the power of your voice is really important. You can navigate complex structures and hierarchies. So if you have to work in a corporate environment, an educational institution, a medical sort of thing, this is paperwork. This is all the sort of nonsense and, and contracts and stuff, but it tells me that you're able to do it. You can navigate it. You're probably going to need to do that to get to the next phase. Starting a business usually requires working with a lawyer and filing some papers and things like that. It's worth it. It's nonsense, but it's worth it. Ultimately for you, let's see, is this your only, this is your only pentacles this month. So we have a healing and expansion card here. Um, it's not necessarily the complete pinnacle of, you know, success and everything here, but we have the seven of discs. And uh, this is to me kind of like the financial gardener. This is where you know what not to do. Uh, you have a good idea of what you want to make happen, <clears throat> but it normally comes like in retrograde to test you. Have you learned everything? Are you afraid? Are you ready now to just let this go and grow? Um, so that's a nice kind of bumper sticker. Let it grow, <laughs> let it let it go and let it grow. Um, so that's really what the seven of pentacles wants you to do. Don't overextend, don't overpromise because we can easily attribute this, then you can slide into the seven of swords. So this is the test in the seven of pentacles is, I know my limits, I know my purpose, I know my priorities and I'm gonna stick to them and stick with it. From the seven comes nothing but good. Um, then you will have eight of pentacles, which is production, which is knowledge, which is kind of like apprenticeship. Then you have the um, nine of pentacles, which is independence, uh, self-sufficiency. The 10 of pentacles, which is um, a new beginning, which is marriage, which is growth and contracts and everything positive. So you just need to get through this phase and some really good stuff is on the horizon, okay? Let's take a look now at your expanded forecast, beginning with your health card. And just like the queen or the, or the page of wands here, you may feel that you're in this desert, this desert of hope, of opportunity, of resources, but you are magic and you're gonna make things grow. Um, I like to grow complicated <laughs> flowers sometimes. So uh, I posted a picture of a few weeks ago. There's this um, epiphyllum that took two years for it to kind of grow. And it's a, it's a form of a cactus. And basically, um, after two years, I got this gigantic flower. Patience is a thing that's important when you grow any cacti. Um, uh, it, you have to let them sort of, they grow slow and then sometimes all of a sudden rapid things start to come forth. So I would like you to imagine that it's something like that where you just have to keep nurturing it. Even if you have a lot of things that are going on, the desert can also indicate how much you're putting into something. So if you work a 50, 60 hour work week and you're trying to go to school or start something new in your life, it's like the desert and you're just putting a little bit of water, but guess what? Anything that you're putting into that, it's growing. And just like a cactus, it can, it can withstand. When you start to really water it and put the food and energy into it, that's when something amazing happens. So there's a choice here. Are you feeling empty? Are you feeling sort of this dry spell? If so, invest in yourself. You will blossom more than you are capable, um, uh, aware of knowing that you can. I wanna pull up this picture of the, um, of the epiphyllum here because it's a, it's a pretty flower. Um, you can look at it on my uh, Instagram later. So this is, the, this is what it looks like. And it took a long time for that to happen and it was bigger than my hand. Um, really cool flower. So you're kind of in this unfurling stage where it's time for you to really show your potential, but you have to invest in that for that to happen, okay? Let's look at it from the health perspective. I kind of already talked about many of these things. So some of you may have chronic pain or fatigue. Some of you may be dealing with stress or anxiety. Really, and at that point, you need to work with a professional. So I would say work with a doctor for those sorts of things. Um, some of you are feeling just stuck in your life. And I feel like it's it's fear or anxiety that could be holding you back. So all of this actually, if you can't get through it on your own, ask for help, it's okay, it's a good thing. It's gonna help you get to this growth period of the seven of pentacles. Working just with the totem that I talked about, be mindful of not going overboard because the uh, larva stage is about kind of like 
doing it all at once, eating everything so that you can get to the next phase. Um, so some of us can go like all in. We decide, all right, I'm going to learn everything I can about this. and I'm going to work, you know, 110%. Pace yourself, I would say. When it comes to anything in diet or exercise, the same thing is true. Don't exclude everything. Don't include everything. Don't change it overnight. Your body can't work with that, nor can your mind. And it's just better to work with a professional on all of these things. A lot of this stuff I think is actually just anxiety or pacing or prioritization with health. And then once you uh, create, once you decide to do it, judgment upright, stick with it. This is a very conservative, very rigid card, but the combination of these two is good for change. It's like, I know what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do it. So once you set your mind to it, uh, Gemini, you're gonna be in a really good place and then just focus on the concentration. If you're having a hard time concentrating, change up the environment too. You could try that as well. All right, let's look at wealth, which can be career, life purpose, resource management. Open up, this is the clamshell, open up. There's something beautiful inside. Um, so this is also the page of wands reversed. So I feel like there could be a new opportunity on the horizon for you, but you're scared or you're uncertain or you haven't accepted it internally just yet. Um, so this is your chance to figure out what to do with that. Um, and um, <laughs> the other thing here is just kind of like open, this could be a, an inquisitive sort of stage. I, you know, one of my, my undergraduate degree was in journalism. Um, I also had a degree in sort of like storytelling, filmmaking and et cetera. But the journalistic side of me actually is very good for what we do here. Um, there's never a lack of questions that I can think of for something. And I think it's really good to question stuff. This is something that a lot of times traditional societies, organized religion, school even, um, they have a hard time when you question things. It's good to ask the questions. So do the research, ask the questions, be open to new things, and at least listen to someone. And, and if they're not listening to you, then that's also a sign that you're not going to let them close you down. Okay. So, I mean, these two go hand in hand as well. So for some of you, you may have hit a little bit of a kind of like a dry spell or a rut or something. And this is about looking at the different points of view. If you immediately block everything out, you're missing something. And it goes back to what we were looking at with the Four of Cups. There's another way, there's another alternative. So look at that. Um, recovery is the main message for finances this month. And uh, one thing that you wanna look at is forgiveness. Because sometimes if, let's say you were cheated of money or let's say you made some bad decisions with your own finances, there can be this feeling of like, I failed. I don't wanna fail again. No, you learned a difficult lesson. It's not about failing and succeeding. It's more about understanding, I don't wanna do that anymore. We've all made mistakes in our life. It's how we work with it. There's a rose underneath that thorn. Um, so allow yourself to, to get past it because this tells me you can and you will, as long as you are stubborn and consistent and you focus and you concentrate, okay? Let's look at love and relationships. Um, we have the Venice um, Mallow here, hibiscus, basically. It's delicate, fleeting beauty. When life is not coming up roses, look to the weeds and find the beauty hidden within them. Amen to this one. Um, I love walking with Apollo and looking at flowers. When I was a kid, probably, I know this actually because I've seen uh, past life flashbacks. I'll hold this up in a second. But I used to make my parents stop the car so that I could look at wildflowers or look at nature. Um, I was really like a hippie kid. I didn't realize it at the time. Um, and I like to read books on like horticulture and stuff like that. So I've always liked flowers. I've always liked nature um, because they're healing, because they respond. They're very intuitive. Um, and weeds, someone argued with me in the comments. Don't argue with me on this one. Weeds are per perceived. Yes, there are certain plants that um, are invasive. I'm not talking about that. But I think sometimes we just look at a plant that's growing wild and we think, oh, that's just, you know, a wildflower or a weed. Well, all we did with certain varieties is we domesticated them and, you know, kind of cultivated them into what we've seen. But yeah, everything started in as just a wildflower or a quote unquote weed. It's beautiful. And if you can kind of slow your life down, like I made my parents slow the car down, God bless them, they, they used to do it. Um, so and just let me look at wildflowers <laughs> as a kid. It's important, so let your kids have a moment and be a kid, let yourself have a moment and enjoy something. Literally take time to smell the flowers and also take time to appreciate beauty. And look at yourself maybe as that wildflower or someone that could be potentially coming into your life as that. They're not gonna fit the mold. This could be your child. 
because I'm getting the childhood memories that come back. So you don't, your, your kid, you may want them to be something like um, a rose or, you know, I don't know, a magnolia, but they're like some wild flower that's going to do whatever they want to do. That's them. Um, let them do what they need to do. You do you. Um, and when it comes to love, we can't control love like that. So love is, is release, is freedom, is, it's, it's openness. And so that's really what this card is about. In relationships this month, recognizing the wild and unbridled energy that each of us kind of has and letting people express that, not trying to change or box them in. It could be your lover, it could be a friend, it could be a coworker, it could be your child, but there's someone in your life that is unconventional and good for them. That's what I see with that. Let me look at it from some other perspectives this month. Um, for some of you, you're probably at a um, make it or break it point. So let's look at it. I'm going to start with those of you in a relationship and then I'll look at looking for love and then not focusing on it. So if you're in love, there's a disagreement and potentially an argument. We've got both of these cards reversed and, you know, it feels like communication's just broken down um, and it could be very difficult to see it from the other side of you, the other perspective. It's like night and day. And that's what we kind of see with this two of swords. The truth of the matter is things are okay. Like there's, there is a way to get past this. There's actually maybe another perspective that all of you need to look at. So the, the hardest thing for the two of you this month, if you're in a relationship is finding a different way to go about this. Um, I think you probably need some space. You might need another perspective. You may need some assistance with this. I think if you're willing to do the work, we have healing cards at the end here. So this to me would very much be a therapist. And this would also be recovery and growth and investment. So the relationship can be improved, but it's not easy. It takes work. This is the worker bee card. You'll always see the person kind of wiping the sweat of their brow, looking at it and thinking, why is it taking so long for this to grow? Why is it taking so long for this to happen? So are you patient enough? Um, if you're not, then this card is going to win out. It's like, I don't, I, I just feel stuck. So you can decide there's no right or wrong in these cards. If you're in a happy relationship and you're wondering how this relates, there could, I feel like there's this sort of stagnation that could be happening in the relationship because the crowning card is the hanged man. And the kind of cure to this is how to get back and just have some fun. Six of cups or the sun card is about irreverent, joyful, ephemeral sort of energy. So stop being so serious and start getting back into, yeah, we used to just have fun. Let's have some fun. It's not always about who paid the bills, who's picking up the kids, what have you done? I got to work tonight, go pick this up at the grocery store. It's not like that. So it's about getting back into, hey, let's just hang out. I don't care what we do, as long as I'm with you. So that's that's the answer to that. All right, if you're not looking, for, well, actually, so that's in love. If you're looking for love, it's a tricky month, I have to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> I think for many of you, there's a lot of internal healing that has to happen between the Nine of Swords and the Ten of Swords. Um, but can you meet someone? Sure. Uh, we have uh, two really good cards for new love. What this would tell me is that there would be a youthful energy to the person, big personality. Um, your personality and the other person's personality, it seemed to be very uh, sort of, you're, you're calling in someone big spirited, big energy. And um, easy to talk to, but this, is, this can also be physical. So it feels to me like uh, it might be short lived, it might be ephemeral, but it's kind of nice. The thing that has to happen to maybe make this stick around a little bit is how are you dealing with fatigue? How are you dealing with stress? Do you feel fulfilled in your life in general? Because if not, then it's time to make a change. With the career stuff, again, some of you might just be ready to quit. And in a relationship, the same is true. There's something that needs to happen to clear the energy out for new people, for new things. Okay, so both in career and love, you might be at that sort of final straw. Um, this could also be a turning point. It's up to you how you want to interpret it. Free will always wins out. If you're not interested in love, not bad. Not a bad time to not be interested in it because I actually feel like you have a lot of growth potential this month. You can really take it, uh, the energy and be productive. Uh, I think that you also might be receiving a lot of energetic downloads. This is Gabriel. Downloads just means like inspiration. It could be coming through in dreams. You could just be walking and thinking, oh, I got to do this. Or how about this idea? Great time for ideation. Uh, when it comes to partnering up with people, um, one of the things that's kind of interesting here is with the Hierophant, it could just be a little tricky for some of you 
to, again, uh, figure out how to communicate because this is some somewhat all or nothing. So I feel like keeping an open mind is really, really important. Um, ultimately, again, I feel a little bit better about putting the energy into um, any sort of educational or work endeavors or self-improvement. I think that's going to be well worth it this month. And um, definitely the cards support that. Remember again here, as we, before I move on to the destiny card here, it says delicate fleeting beauty. So that's definitely ephemeral to me. Um, so new love to me would probably have this sort of, it's a transitional relationship. So if you're on the rebound, um, if you're not sure if you can do it, it feels kind of nice. feels kind of, like I said, it might be fleeting, but it could be what gets your confidence back. So nothing to be lost by that. All right, let's take a look at your final card. Destiny is not like written in the stars. This is very much what you're writing in your own book of destiny. Uh, we have the Buffalo Spirit card here coming through saying an abundant universe will provide. So basically there's a lot of growth. There's a lot of potential. There could be um, some sort of a, um, it kind of reminds me of Taurus, even though it's Buffalo. But anyway, there's, there's a strong energy on the horizon for you. Uh, be open to that, I would say. Uh, and if you believe that there is there are opportunities that you can grow, that it's going to be okay, you call it in. If you think that things are going to close up just like the clam, then they may as well. Okay. Let's do a quick review and then let's move a little deeper and see what we can do to break through this month. I would love to look at a couple of things for you. I want to look um, in the soul path in a moment at the Ten of Swords. How can we, let's write it down, <laughs> Nicholas. We're going to look at how we can improve communication because that's definitely a question that I have. So improve uh, communication. I also want to look at uh, how to make peace with the change because we have the hanged man and the judgment reverse card. So um, taking the first step is what I'm going to put here, taking the first step so that I remember these. And then uh, we'll do a wild card after that. OK, let's do a quick review. If you just joined, perfect timing. If you've been here, stick around because I still get additional insights when I do the review. Then we're going to go into the soul path and we're going to do some sleuthing, some problem solving, some investigation work. Okay. Your spirit totem this month is the ladybug. Um, I was really focusing this month on the four phases of its life cycle, which I never really have done for the ladybug. Um, it's always a symbol of luck to me, actually. I forgot to mention that earlier. Whenever I see this, it means that good things are going to happen. Uh, but today we're going to focus on the changes that are happening within you. Um, just a little bit of back history. They're beneficial insects. They help get rid of things like aphids. And um, they can eat an, an astounding amount, like 5,000 insects in their lifetime, which I just thought was fun fact. Um, the other thing here is that the red color serves as a warning, like I don't taste good, avoid me. Um, one thing you might want to be looking at is what kind of a warning signal you're giving off. If you're trying to find love, but like the, the no vacancy sign is lit up, you want to look at that because you might be giving off that red light. Um, it's also just a general note to say, hey, I'm going to have a thicker skin and not let this kind of stuff get to me, right? I went through some of the cycles that are associated with it. So like the eggs or the hatching or the genesis portion can take up to a week. There's a month of that sort of consumption or developmental stage with the larva. When you're truly going into the change energy, it's like 15 days, the pupa stage, which is like the cocoon or the chrysalis. And then finally you emerge. And I was, I was fascinated to see that they can live for a year. Not all insects live that long. Um, some monarchs can live around eight to 10 months, but a lot of butterflies like may only live a week. So this is a very, this, this insect uh, sticks around for a while. So the change that you're going to make right now can also help with that. And yeah, I see some notes on the root chakra for sure. Um, but there's symbols of luck, symbols of protection, and really the, the sort of seasons of growth here, which is what we're seeing here. More than one phase of growth is what I see. You might be going through like three or four different phases of growth over the next quarter of the year. Ultimately, many of you, especially for those of you that are having birthdays, this is a chance to begin and start something new, Genesis, renewal. Um, find a challenge, find something that engages you. It should be helping you grow in mind, body, and spirit. If you're feeling stuck like the hanged man, this is the answer. I need to reinvest. I need to take on a new challenge in my life. If you've had a block before, guess what? Because this is a symbol of uh, removal of those blocks, then you're gonna have better luck. Plus we're 
looking right now in a retrograde period, even though I'm reading for July, that means that you're going to have the capacity to transmute. Growth is basically what it's all about. But remember that it happens within. You've got to also, you have to keep feeding and nurturing it. So just because you want something doesn't mean it will happen. You have to take um, active steps to make sure that that's coming into fruition. Reevaluate anyone, anything that's kind of holding you back in your life. This is reminding you that um, if there's someone that is incapable or unwilling of doing that, are they really your friend? Are they really capable of allowing you to go into that next state of growth? We have this pupa metamorphosis stage next, which is really allowing you to make a big shift, but you have to feel it within. I talked about announcements and coming out. If you don't believe it, I'm not going to believe it. If you can state it as something that you really care about and want me to know, then I'm, I'm all in. Um, change in itself can be scary. It can be exhilarating. It can be exciting. Think of it as a roller coaster. Try to have fun. Take the good with the not so good. And ultimately, we're getting you towards this chance for you to spread your wings and fly. Um, the hardest part is that first step, but it's totally worth it. Remember how hard you've worked and why you want this. Trust in the process. There is a little bit of patience that's part of the hanged man. You're not really being stuck. You're actually being asked to integrate before moving on so you don't make the same mistakes. It's a blessing card in disguise. Um, the fact that the ladybug's wings are hidden from view also shows that you may not realize your potential. When you make a, a change, other people may not be able to see it. That doesn't mean that it's not there. It's just hidden from view. Um, give yourself, give others a chance to accept and observe and make peace with that change. Detox, P uh, pay attention to diet, um, your environment, and also relationships. It's all about what's around you and what you're ingesting. That's either going to inhibit or enhance growth. And it's all about growth this month. When I saw the clam, I felt this sort of clenching energy. So for some of you, this is going to, um, it, it could affect your body, which is what I was talking about here. But the other thing here is to kind of look at, is someone in your life shutting you out? Are you shutting something else down? There could be that sort of clenching. There could also be um, a, a message around reciprocation. Whatever it is, if you don't deal with it, it could end up affecting your body. And we saw some of that chronic pain here. So the sooner you release that, the sooner your body can kind of relax and get back to um, a better and healthier state. The rainstorm that I saw was very positive because it kind of reminds me of when I look at Jupiter, expansion and growth is what I was seeing here. And um, you just want to kind of be like this cosmic gardener, which we got here with the seven of pentacles or seven of discs. Emotions may run high, but they also may be really beneficial in helping you be creative and channel new things. So I like that as well. Um, move where your heart is, is pushing you to move. Uh, try to go with the flow than it, rather than against it because you can get there faster if you allow for the change to happen. I saw the mountaintop. So that represents to me like 10 of wands, which is a nice kind of contrast the, the 10 of swords over here. So you're going to overcome a challenge. And it's really, for some of you, a change of vision, a change of perspective, something new, which I like. And improvisation is key. You may have a recipe. You may have this rigid way of doing something. But the universe wants you to mix it up a little bit. So don't be afraid to try something different. Concentration. Are you having trouble with it? Um, Ganesha is here to help you. You can meditate on this um, particular deity. You can also just try to have an accountability partner to help you through this. Once you concentrate, once you focus, then you are actually able to get past the block that you're currently experiencing. There sometimes isn't a right versus wrong. There are two perspectives. And the two of swords here is reminding you that you are somewhere in the middle. The truth is somewhere in between. In relationships, we see this sort of breakdown happening. So try to see it more in the middle. Maybe you need a, me a mediator to assist with it. The good news is you're going to get through this. We also have the sun slash sunflower energy attached to the princess of wands who can work in a desert, who can work when things aren't um, sort of like ending up the way you want them to be. And if there is a health challenge, these are very positive as well because they can help you work through it. Pay attention to your stomach, your solar plexus. This could be an area where um, you need to kind of work on digestion or exercise to kind of help move this. Again, with all the health issues, work with professionals. I'm just talking about the energy blocks. The sun is really cool because look at all the little hands that are extending out from this uh, sun. This is your charisma. This is your ability to help people see it from your point of view. Don't let people push your buttons. 
don't meet someone at a lower energetic sort of um, conversation. So if they say something cruel, you, you don't need to participate in that. You also don't need to ingest it. Sometimes people are just not nice. Um, I see negative comments and see it in everyday life as well. So I just don't, I don't pay it any mind. Um, there's a reason that there's an ignore button on some of these things. You can just ignore it and that's what I do. All right, hanged man. For many of you, this is a, a reminder that you're actually not being stuck. There's a new opportunity on the horizon. The reason you're kind of in the hanged man stage is, do you believe in you? If you believe in yourself, then this flips to the upright. Otherwise, it's disbelief. So I need you to believe. Magic only works if you believe it. So believe. There's a hidden perspective, a, a hidden blessing here, but you could be getting in, in your own way. Um, someone else could be pushing stress upon you, a parent, a partner, a boss, and you've got to get beyond that this month. Um, they're on the outside looking in. They don't really understand where you're coming from. So there, there could be an impasse. And if that's the case, sometimes it's not worth it. It's not worth wasting time and energy on that because there's something new that is more deserving of your time, of your investment. And that's what we see with the Ace of Swords. It's also your voice, good stuff coming through. Believe in yourself. Um, also, for some of you, this is a renewal card, a bouncing back. It's it's the phoenix rising from the ashes. It's the metamorphosis. It's the butterfly. And um, or in this case, it's the ladybug. The Hierophant card is reminding you that you can navigate difficult structures. You can create your own new habits that will stick. These are going to be a, a, a especially effective when it comes to finances with the Seven of Pentacles, Seven of Discs. You're going to set in motion better habits. You may feel stuck, but you're not as stuck as you think. Even in the desert, there's a lot of life. If you wait until evening, there's all kinds of stuff that comes out. It looks like there's nothing there, but if you look beneath the surface, the, the desert's very much alive. It just grows. Things grow in the desert at a different rate and everything, life is different there. It, it works differently. So this is about opening up your, your sort of perspective and saying, you know what? I'm going to have to look at my life, at my resources, as, at everything from a different point of view. But you can overcome a block. You can start to recover and you have to take some action to do that when it comes to health this month. Chronic pain and fatigue, definitely want to deal with that relationships, listen, make sure they're listening, try new things. Um, this is also work because they're, they're both kind of tied together here. So work and relationships this month, just keep an open perspective because the communication is going to hit both ways. Um, with work, career or life purpose, there might be something that's kind of unfurling. I talked about the fern yesterday when I was reading for, or on Friday rather, when I was reading for Taurus. So there's, for you, it's the wings that are opening up. It's the same metaphor that I'm seeing for different signs, opening, revealing. Relationships, there's a delicate balance going on right now. Some of you are going to stay. Some of you are going to go. If you have new love, it may be sort of ephemeral, short-lived, but it still seems sweet here from what I can see. Um, for yourself, remember you're the wildflower or the other person in your life might be the wildflower, so give them some space. Buffalo spirit is showing abundance is here. Just open up to it and say, I'm ready. I'm ready to receive abundance in all the highest forms. Something that I've been repeating for all signs this month, because it's true if you believe in it. All right, let's uh, go into the soul path. I wrote down the questions, so we're going to look at them. We're going to start with improving communication because that was the first thing. How can we improve communication, Gemini? What messages around communication do you need to see or know? Let's see what's coming through. I love this card for you. We have the Six of Wands. Success is at hand. Literally, it's in your hand. Um, look at how this actually carries with it some air energy as well. Um, it's almost like we see the, the crows that I would normally associate with um, Six of Swords. There's a couple of decks that combine this. I just recently got Prisma Vi uh, Visions, and um, this, this True Heart deck also has this combination of wands and swords. So what I see for you is, for communication, um, first of all, people may be looking to you for advice, for a decision, when you're in a leadership position, guess what? People are gonna complain because they can, because it's easier, because they need someone to point at. So if you're doing the right thing and it is for growth, um, it's not always going to be what people want or expect, 
but it might be the right thing. So take the good with the bad. We've got the good and the wands. We've got maybe the crows cawing at you. Um, not necessarily so good, but it's, it's going to sometimes be that way. If you're really successful at what you do, you're always going to have people that love it or hate it. When it's a movie, when it's a book, when it's art, some people will think that's trash and other ones are, are thinking that's amazing. What are you talking about? So take the good with the bad. And like I said, ignore some of that stuff. Um, the other thing with, with the six of wands is to focus on the right thing. Notice how the wands are around the bird's head. You know what you need to do. This is just people that could be trying to take you off that path. So do what's necessary and trust that the um, kind of like the cream rises to the top, right? The good, the best energy is going to surround you. The other stuff is just going to fall away. All right. So you might lose some friends. You might gain some friends. You might lose some followers, but you're going to gain ones that really matter. And that's the important thing here is do it because it's right. Um, I love the nest because it actually looks like a they're, they're charms. I don't read charms, but some people do. Maybe I'll play around with it in the future. But we see like some dice. We see um, a flower. We see a coin. I can't see what else there are. There's some other stuff in there, <laughs> probably some worms. But um, what I like here is that it's almost like you have to dig into your treasure box, your toolkit, and you're going to be able to think your way around this, OK? Really beautiful card. Um, also, for some of you, I kind of see them, it's almost like the olive branch there that it's offering too. So there may be something that you've said or done and you just need to kind of like make a reparation on that. It's gonna be okay. Um, so you're not gonna make everyone happy. An apology goes a long way. You have a toolkit that you can work from to successfully work through it. And when we're looking at my original question, even though this card went way beyond it of how to improve communication, six of swords would be get some distance. Six of wands would think of the greater good. And Six of Wands would also be thinking of, it's going to be okay, putting that into the mix, saying, I know we can get through this. Let's take some time. Let's figure this out. And then if it still doesn't work, you've done everything that you can, okay? All right, um, let's move on to taking the first step. Three of Pentacles, amen to this. This is so good for you because this indicates that the cosmic gardener here, uh, the financial gardener, is paying off. This is recognition. This is graduation. This is this is doing it. This is great, actually. Um, so for those of you that are interested in distributing or publishing something, this is the card of publication as well. Um, I like it. And it's also showing me that it's very good feedback. Three of Cups can be either way. It can be gossip. It can be one person saying something and then something else. Three of Pentacles is usually very good. So the direction in which you are currently headed bodes well. The path that you are considering investing upon, it, it makes sense to me. And it feels like this is going to open you up for completion of the goal. This is graduation, going to college, graduating, um, starting a new sort of habit in your life and sticking with it. Um, but it also is going to lead to abundance. I like it a lot. You could be seeking out a mentor because I asked like uh, taking the first step. This is a, a mentor and eight of pentacles would be a training card. And it feels like you're just about ready for that, like an apprentice card. So a little more work and then you could work with a mentor. Um, no matter what, I like it. And this is really good when it comes to future money and future abundance for you. Okay. Let's pull a wild card and just see where we're headed and what else we need to know. And, um, and then we will do a quick meditation followed by your silent question that you have for me. So before we get to that, let's look at a wild card. What else do we need to know? Okay, you guys love the swords, don't you? <laughs> um, we have the Six of Swords this month. Um, I like the Six of Swords. It's one of the nicest Six of Swords I've seen. Um, so there's nothing bad with Six of Swords, by the way. It was reversed, but let's just look at it upright. So this is about movement and moving on. It's also release. Typically in a traditional Six of Swords, you would see a person in a ship and then a ghost behind them, a ghost of the past um, represented, rep rep representing what was. What we see here is someone who's kind of been through the, uh, the, the tough current here, the troubled waters, and is now, it's interesting, we've got the crows, we've got six, they're now lifting you up. 
So you're going to get through this. And we got the two sixes, the six of wands and the six of swords. Um, so the six of swords for some of you is just taking the step away or towards something. And it's telling you you're going to be okay. There actually may be people around you that can help you. Look at how the crows are actually helpful. They're misunderstood. I like them as a totem. There's a deck that I may purchase sometime that's all with crows. <laughs> but um, yeah, they're interesting creatures and they're here to really transform you. Because they work with um, the dead, basically, when you think of what they are, they're carrion creatures. Um, they are symbols of transformation and they are messengers from beyond. So they're very powerful in a totem sense. So what I see here is the letting go um, will bring you to a new level. There may be people around you that want to help. Might be a good idea to accept that help, right? And it's going to feel better when you get past this current phase. But the movement, the loss can be, can be tough. Some of you may be experiencing pain because you lost a friend, you lost a lover, you, this could be like they broke up with you or maybe the, there's a family member that passed away, the Six of Swords can also be grieving, but you're being pulled to something better. The universe doesn't want you to suffer. It's just a moment that you have to go through and there's usually something that's a reward after a period of, of difficulty, it gives you context. So let's look for the rainbow. Let's use a rainbow, it's a really nice segue in the meditation. And um, after we meditate, think of what your question is for me and I'll take a look at it. Before we go into the meditation, um, just a couple of quick notes. If you like what you see here and you wanna make sure that you don't miss a future video, um, you can like and subscribe. We'll talk about that in a second. You can also follow me on social media. So um, my handle is at Nicholas Ashbaugh. I post story reminders on just about every platform that allows me to do that. So it's a great way to see what's going on. I also put pictures of the written cards on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Um, also, on, um, I'm on Pinterest. It's the same handle. So I'll upgrade this <laughs> one day and put that on there as well. And if you want little sub tweets where I put all of the messages, I put that on Twitter as well. It's an Ashball. So feel free to join me across social media if you'd like. And um, if you'd like to follow me here on YouTube, subscribe is the word to do that. It's a, it's a really kind of weird word. You're not going to have to sign up for anything. It just allows you then to, on your homepage, see me. So if you haven't hit subscribe, please do that. It helps the channel growth. Um, if you would like to receive reminders, you can do that by doing this, but YouTube forces you to opt in to do that. And then one thumbs up if you haven't done that, it helps. I see we have like roughly half the amount of likes as people here. If you could like it, it'll help this video reach more people and that helps more than you imagine. All right, let's go ahead and get into the meditation, which will be brief but important. It's gonna help us integrate. Uh, I want us to kind of work with the ladybug energy and then also uh, work with the rainbow because they're both kind of transformation energies for me. So this will take about two minutes, but um, while we're doing it, you can think about what your question might be for me and then we'll go into that question afterwards. So imagine yourself uh, in a beautiful forest after the rain and it smells fresh. It's kind of like if you've ever walked out at the beginning of a rainstorm or right afterwards, you can smell, uh, I believe it's ozone, but that wonderful sort of fresh, clean scent of rain. You can also smell the, the earth, um, which is beautiful too. It's kind of this musty, petrichor kind of scent. It's really nice. So as you take a deep breath, you have the tones of ozone, the tones of the earth, and maybe here in LA, I've been noticing beautiful flowers. They're almost done, but we can still see um, you know, like honeysuckle is out there and jasmine. And so there's this beautiful, sweet scents that are kind of uh, greeting your, your, your nose. And it just really kind of wakes you up. And notice the, the glistening green leaves everywhere, all the little blades of grass, uh, all the beautiful ferns and pine trees and palm trees, whatever you imagine around you. Find a place where you can sit down. Maybe there's a rock where the sun has been shining, it's warmed up and it's dry. Good to sit on that because it's going to be a nice earthen element as you're sitting there. If you want to, you can let your feet be in the water um, so you feel the movement as you're doing this. And imagine that as you sit there, little tiny um, ladybugs start to land on your shirt, on your hand. You can even look at one of them really close up on one of your fingers if you want to. And as each of these ladybugs lands on you, you feel this sort of healing energy that goes through you because um, they're very small, but they're going to bring a blessing. If you have pain, you could imagine that several of them line up on your back, wherever you're feeling that. Um, or if you've been feeling it on your head, you could imagine a crown of, of beautiful ladybugs um, 
sort of sets in place and they start to kind of flutter their wings because they do have them and they're going to move the energy around you. We've done a butterfly meditation like this, but I like the, the ladybugs because they're small, they're gentle, and they have this just beautiful, sweet energy to them. Uh, they're also bringing you luck. They're very lucky. So if you, if you want to imagine yourself like a bee charmer, they could just be all around you, all these ladybugs. So feel their energy around you. And if you'd like to imagine that you're kind of wrapped in that color, um, it's not bad to have red energy around you. That is the root chakra. So let's imagine that you're kind of placing your root into the planet like the tree, and you have this beautiful red glow around you and green from the forest. So we have the heart chakra and the root chakra together, and we're gonna pull the energy up through the other ones. So you have healing and stability as your sort of general energies. Um, feel that this is gonna continue as I play the singing bowl and take a look at the sun um, shining through the sort of mist around you and you see a beautiful rainbow and you realize you're at the end of that rainbow. So all that you've been seeking is within and um, just kind of look up at the rainbow, look at the beautiful ladybugs around you and just accept this blessing. Take a deep breath and the exhale. Imagine that you could just stretch out your arms, stretch out your wings. Um, imagine that anything that um, has been holding you back now is released and uh, know that all that awaits you now is that decision to take the first step in the next uh, direction that you wanna go, that you're, you're being led there. You're being uh, healed and pushed into that new path. You have the ladybugs, you have the rainbow and you have your sort of resolve that's going to help you take the next step in your life. All right, uh, as I put this away here, I want you to think of what question you might have for me. It's a silent question, so there's no need to type it. Uh, just send it to me, I'm gonna shuffle the cards and I'm gonna tell you what I see. This is a nice card. Um, it's reversed, but it's very beneficial. So as a yes, no question, this would be a yes. We have the two of cups here. One of the things that I, I would like you to think about, the reason that it could be reversed is the same reason judgment was reversed, which is, do you feel that you deserve that which is coming to you? If you have doubts, then what you're trying to call in, whether it's a partnership or an opportunity, it will not come in the way or shape or timing that you wished it would because you are not at peace with that. You don't feel that you deserve it just yet. So just accept, say, I'm ready. I'm absolutely ready for that. Um, Two of Cups is beautiful. It can show a, a deep love, a deep friendship, a great beginning to something very special. Um, definitely is a, a higher love that's coming through, but it takes time. This isn't the final phase of it. Like we would want to see like lovers probably, but this leads to that. It's great. I like what I see here. Um, and the other thing here is for some of you, um, seeing that, uh, you know, like I like that cups are sometimes mirrors and I love that. I think this is the Taj Mahal right in front of it. We have like this gigantic mirror, uh, the people around you, even the ones you don't like, they are mirrors of things that you need to see. 
So looking at the people as blessings, as teachers is gonna be really important as well. So in order to call in the, the um, upright two of cups, um, some of the reversals that we're seeing here, the people that are kind of like a false version of what you're looking for, they're just showing you that final lesson that you need to integrate. So I would say um, you're definitely on the right track. Um, I see some new love or friendship or partnerships coming through, but the hesitation gives me pause. So there is this question of, do I believe that I deserve it? Once you believe it, once you accept it, once you are clear on what it is that you want, then the other person can come in and deliver. Okay. So really like it. Uh, and so it's a yes, comma, or dot, dot, dot. But if and only if you believe yourself, if and only if you've done the work to heal and to build within, and if and only if you're not looking for completion within another being, they're there to complement, not complete. Um, but it's a beautiful card and a beautiful message. So anyway, it does portend good things for new love. Like I mentioned, this could be ephemeral, but you could also just give it some time and see where it leads you, right? right? So sometimes something just casual and fun can end up being something more, including friendships. It, this could develop into something deeper. So I like what I see for you guys. Um, quick review of the uh, soul path, and then we're gonna just wrap up for today. So the first question was improving communications. I think I got these mixed up here. So it was this, this, and this. All right, so for improving communications, <clears throat> we had the six of wands. So again, it was really about knowing what you need to do. There might actually be some support around you. So being willing to accept that support is gonna be a part of this. You also have everything that you need right here, and you're gonna project the idea of success before it even happens. Um, for taking that first step here, um, we have the, uh, the six of swords. So for some of us, there's just this, understanding that um, once you let go, everything starts to come into focus. Once you accept the help, you start to go to the next level. Release is definitely a piece of this. Um, and I feel like you're on a good path. And, and both of these cards indicate that even with this reverse, this is showing me recognition, completion, development. And this one is showing me um, really nice connection in the future coming through for you, okay? Just make sure that there's reciprocated energy. Because the two of cups reverse could be someone that wants to take more than they give. It could be you doubting yourself. It could just be hesitation. So clear out those sorts of things, and then it'll just be an upright two of cups. Okay, beautiful stuff today. Uh, before we wrap up, just a couple of quick notes. If you need any information, I pinned a note from Dakota there. You can always go to my uh, website and take a look at what's coming through um, or what's what's coming up rather. The There's also gonna be a couple of collectives this month. So let me just give you the information on that uh, because I have it. Uh, I think I do here if I can find it. Uh, but I have a mid-month collective, a bonus reading, and also a uh, end of month collective. And these are open to everyone to come and join in. So I would love for you to do that. I'm looking to see if I can find them. I don't think I can. Um, you can find the information on the schedule just by clicking on this link there. That's the uh, social one, here's this. So you can go there, click on this month and you will see the upcoming videos. And um, again, I've, I've already posted it on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. So you can look at the schedule there, but I have um, three bonus readings each month. This has been because of your assistance in liking, sharing, subscribing, and kind of like helping this channel grow. So please keep doing that. It really does help. If you're watching on replay, you can also use the applaud feature, like I said. Thank you to everyone that's given back today. If you're a fan of sci-fi and fantasy and you like a longer read like uh, Dune or Lord of the Rings, I have a book. It's called The Luminous Ones. Uh, it's available on most major booksellers. You can go to my website for information. That's the cover. And uh, the hardcover is actually on sale in the United States. I think in Canada right now too. It's a little cheaper than it normally is if you go to Amazon. So I don't control that, but that happens sometimes. Thank you for liking and subscribing if you haven't already done so. This is my last plug to do it. And um, thank you so much. One last time, join me on social media, especially Instagram. I put a bunch of fun pictures up on the stories, not always just uh, what the next video is, but a lot of times the walks that I'm taking with my dog, etc. cetera. So um, thanks to Dakota. Thanks to Maria for being here today. Lots of love and light to everyone. Have a great week ahead. And if you would like to join me, I'll be back again tomorrow reading for cancer, um, same time, 9 a.m. Pacific. And my schedule for broadcasting is always Sundays and Mondays and Thursdays and Fridays unless otherwise indicated. Okay. Take care, everyone. Much love and light. And I will see you tomorrow. All right. Bye-bye.